Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless it sounds like something out of a novel about the end times a way for a government to track your movements through a digital identity system but it's not science fiction it's under consideration right now in the european union and it might even come to the u.s imagine a state where the government keeps tabs on everywhere you go everything you say and everything you buy through a digital identity system. Sounds like communist China, right? Well, now the European Union may be headed in that same direction. And what's even worse, the idea is gaining support right here in the U.S., our own Congress. Dale Hurd has the story. Is the European Union on its way to becoming a surveillance society like China? The European Digital Identity. This cheery introduction to the EU's upcoming digital identity program tells citizens that it will make their lives easier while keeping them safer online. The European digital identity wallets will enable us to store and exchange documents and legal information while fully controlling which data we want to share with whom. ID data sent. EU President Ursula von der Leyen says digital identities will give citizens control over how their personal data is used and will help stop identity theft. The so-called digital wallet will be an app on a person's phone and will contain only the information a person wants it to include, such as medical or financial information. Credit rating sent. Income statement sent. It's already under attack in the European Parliament as something that would be ripe for government abuse. One of its chief critics, European Parliament member Christian Turris, was born in communist Romania and has long been warning of the EU's so-called Chinification. Clearly we are witnessing right now the Chinification of Europe because we see what is happening in China right now with the social credit score where the government is monitoring and uh, surveilling all the people from the beginning to end. Everything that they do, everything, everywhere where they walk, every, it's every, you know, they control everything and they, they, they watch everything. This is the example of a tyranny. The EU insists the digital identity program will be voluntary. Skeptics are wondering how long before it becomes mandatory. How voluntary is the European digital identity wallet? But even more important, how voluntary will it remain in the future? because the European Union always comes up with nice plans to eventually abuse it to create more control. The EU's COVID passport was supposed to be temporary. Now Brussels wants to extend it until at least June of next year. COVID passports have been used to prevent the unvaccinated from crossing borders, entering grocery stores, using public transit and even going to their jobs. It's helped fuel violent demonstrations, the likes of which Europe hasn't seen for decades. Some in Washington are urging Joe Biden to establish digital identities for Americans as a way of fighting identity theft. There's also support in Congress. The so-called Improving Digital Identity Act of 2020 never made it to a vote but could be revived. Not only are digital IDs coming to Europe, but in Italy, the cities of Rome and Bologna have begun social credit programs that reward citizens for behavior that officials think will fight climate change, like using a bicycle instead of a car. A social credit system could be easily incorporated into a digital identity. Austrian Catholic leader Alexander Chukowell says that in any European social credit system, Christians will lose because of their opposition to issues like abortion that the EU views as a human right. Therefore, I do not want the European Union to have the possibility to look into everything I do, everything I say, everything I have, and how I move and where I am at any time. Those systems are pushed by people who are highly anti-Christian. Torres warns that the EU's new digital ID is the next step in a process in which the government in Brussels will micromanage every aspect of people's lives.
This is what makes the difference between a tyranny and democracy. When you know everything about what your government does, that's democracy. When the government knows everything about you, that is tyranny. I hope you see where this is all going. Society is fast moving toward the mark of the beast. As smart devices continue to advance, going from your phone to your watch, the next logical place will be in or on your right hand or forehead. This is the future the Bible has been warning about. We have arrived. Scripture reveals that the Antichrist will unite the world under one religion, one government, and one united economy. Every person will be required to take a mark in order to buy or sell goods of any kind, but it has even more sinister potential. It is a perfect weapon in the arsenal of a tyrant bent on world domination. As we know from the Bible, a tyrannical ruler will govern the entire world during the last half of the tribulation period, and he will likely use technology to accomplish his purposes as we read in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is 666. Technological advances are paving the way for fulfillment of end time prophecy. These innovations are creating the environment that the Antichrist and false prophet will need to wire this world together for their evil purposes. Even now, it is well within the range of possibility for a centralized power to gain worldwide control of all banking and purchasing. What we are witnessing is a glimpse of what the Antichrist beast system will look like. When the deception comes, if you're not a born-again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. People in the high places are Satanist, they're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. With tribulation era prophecy taking shape all around us, if you have never called on the name of the Lord, I implore you to do so today, as we can anticipate the Lord's return is not far off. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Now to our GMA Out Loud series as we celebrate Pride Month. This morning we're exploring faith and identity and what it means to come out in a religious family. It's all part of ABC's Soul of a Nation special, exploring the LGBTQ plus experience. And I spoke with the pastor on a mission to lead with inclusivity and acceptance. For me, being an ally, being an affirming ally, is about standing with, being in solidarity, showing compassion. So good to see all of you on this Sunday. For almost two decades, Pastor Mike, a First Corinthian Baptist Church has led so with inclusivity. As we honor a God who honors all of humanity, we thank God for that today. Everyone is welcome through Absolutely. those doors, LGBTQ plus community as well. It's not that way with other churches, why? Unfortunately, many people have used Christianity as in many ways as a cover, but also maybe even as a conduit for their hate. 
That unconditional love affirming its LGBTQIA plus members, especially on the church's annual Pride Sunday. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. It says that we love beyond the limits of our prejudices, whether through how we were raised or how we were socially influenced, because that's what love means in my belief. I felt an immediate warmth and love, and I saw people that looked like me, that dressed like me. Before FCBC, I thought I could not have a relationship with Christ. Being gay in a religious family can be challenging, a journey relatable for many. I know how it was in my family, very religious. And I'm, I'm lucky. My family embraced me and told me, mm -hmm. God loves you mm -hmm. because of who he is, not of anything you do or don't do. Yeah. But there's so many that will go, Pastor Mike, the Bible. It's not the first time I've heard that when people refer to their or use scripture to justify their prejudice. People in Jesus' day who were socially marginalized, socially outcast, found a space and a place in his presence. He engaged, he formed community. Love your neighbor as yourself. Longtime member Ruthie and her trans daughter Glory joining to discuss their own experience. Glory's first time back in the sanctuary since 2010. Tell me about your spiritual journey, Glory. The year that I came out was the same year that I stopped going to church. And that's a fraught relationship. At the same time, I definitely feel like I've gotten closer to God through being first gay, then trans, then gay and trans. Now Ruthie's sharing her biggest lessons for other parents of faith. Don't despise the packaging. Mm. Just because it's not packaged the way in which you feel it should be does not mean it's not a blessing. Mm. This young lady right here is one of the best things that have ever happened to me. A person's sexuality does not make them no less of a person. And secondly, Love your child. That is who God gave you and entrusts you with. And it's up to you to honor that. We need to chuck our emotions out the window, no matter how hard that may be, and obey God rather than man, as we read in Acts 5.29. But Peter and the apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Equally offensive is the necessity of dying to oneself in order to follow Christ. Of all the religions of the world today, Christianity is the only one that tells you to follow Jesus and die to oneself, as we read in Matthew 16, 24 and Galatians 5, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Those who hear this message know exactly what Jesus means. To follow him is to die to self and give up everything we hold dear. Why are you crying right now? Um, they're like happy. I'm happy to yours. The parental relationship is necessary. And without that, you're kind of like cast adrift. And I'm like deeply grateful that I've like had that anchor. That's a parent's love and that's what it should be. Down in Nashville, Christian singer Nicole Serrano, raised as a preacher's daughter, is still on her road to self-acceptance. I am a gay woman. I've learned to embrace myself and learn to accept all the things that I, I worked so hard and so long to change. Nicole debuting her new music video, Nice to Meet You. A medley, embracing what she says has always been inside. I had really great friends, a great support system, and I started to realize like, okay, I am gay and I'm a Christian, and those two things can happen at the same time. Nearly half of LGBTQIA plus adults in the US are religious. One of Pastor Mike's biggest concerns, those walking away from places of worship due to lack of acceptance. There are so many people who have been damaged and wounded by church, who have been hurt by church. So there's nothing wrong with unlearning and relearning, especially when it's in the name of love and healing and wholeness and hope. Who wants to show up in a world in a way where you live, you love, and you serve. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Colossians 2.8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, 
according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus said there would be a falling away from the Christian faith and false teachers would rise up as we read in Matthew 24, 10 and 11. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. The Bible tells us these false prophets will twist God's word as we read in 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. The Bible goes on to tell us that these false teachers are Satan's servants, as we read in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. The last days church will not follow the truth in the Bible. They will find false teachers to tell them their sin is okay. And not just that it is okay, but it is biblical, as we read in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is what last day's Christianity looks like. It is a Christianity that says there are many paths to heaven. When the Bible clearly says, Jesus Christ is the only way, it is a Christianity that approves of homosexuality, fornication. If you are having sex, and you are not married, it's not called dating, it's called fornication. And abortion, even though God says these things are sin, it is a Christianity that in his church services look just like the world. Jesus goes on to tell us the last day's church will be such a worldly, Christ-rejecting church that he has been thrown out, as we read in Revelation 3, 14 through 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In these verses of scripture, Jesus is talking about the last day's lukewarm church, a church that has one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This church is so disgustingly lukewarm that Jesus vomits it out of his mouth. Jesus counsels the last day's church to buy from him gold, which is purity, white garments, which is righteousness, and I salve, which is truth. These three things can only come from the purity, righteousness, and truth that Jesus offers through salvation in him. Jesus is now standing outside the door of the last day's Laodicean church, offering salvation to anyone who will listen. This is the grace and mercy of God. He has been kicked out of his own church, and yet still knocks and offers salvation to anyone who hears his voice and opens the door. I implore you today, if you are not saved, or are a lukewarm Christian, to take up Jesus' offer of salvation that can only be received through him and only him. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24.12, And because lawlessness will be increased, 
the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Turn out to that news coming in late today of yet another deadly shooting in this country, this time a workplace shooting in Smithsburg, Maryland. Police called to the scene at Columbia Machine Incorporated about 90 minutes outside Washington, D.C. Authorities tonight reporting several dead, and here's our Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas now. Tonight, there's high-speed pursuit by state police near Smithburg, Maryland, ending in a showdown with a suspected gunman in another mass shooting. Is there somebody running from the cops? You can hear the volley of rapid gunfire. Holy <laughs> God, fire! Turn around! The state police responded, uh, pursued the suspect. Suspect fired and uh, shot state trooper in the shoulder, who then returned fire and shot him back. It all started around 2.30 this afternoon with reports of an active shooter at the Columbia Machine Manufacturing Plant, about 75 miles west of Baltimore. Gunshot victim, police are en route. Be advised that it is Columbia Machines. Police finding three dead and another victim critically injured. The suspect fleeing the scene until police chased him down. Gunshots were exchanged between the suspect and the trooper. Both were injured and transported for medical treatment. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to Timothy, tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Right now, police say a 10-year-old is in custody for murder. Orlando police say the girl's mom got in a fight with another woman late at night on Memorial Day at an apartment complex off Mercy Drive. Police said the girl's mom, Lakrisha Isaac, punched Lashin Rogers, who hit back. Isaac reportedly threw her daughter a bag, a bag with a gun inside. According to the police, the 10-year-old girl fired two shots, killing Rogers. Still holding the gun, the girl reportedly said she shouldn't have hit my mama. Tuesday, police arrested the elementary student and charged her with second-degree murder. The World Health Organization is sounding the alarm on the future of monkeypox. Earlier this week, the organization warned time may be running out to prevent an endemic in countries where the virus is not normally seen. The WHO Director General had this to say about the growing risk. The risk of monkeypox becoming established in non-endemic countries is real. It's clearly concerning that monkeypox is spreading in countries where it has not been seen before. It's a concern here in the U.S. too. The number of monkeypox cases has jumped to 35 with four cases identified in the last 24 hours. The CDC has already issued a level two travel alert urging everyone to take extra precautions while on a trip. Turning now to the weather, and Al's got a lot on his plate. The image behind you, wow, where's yeah. that, Ohio? Yeah, this is in Tip City, Ohio, outside of Dayton. Uh, uh, we're talking about a Meyer uh, grocery store distribution center. You can see the damage this possible twist or coat, tripping over uh, tractor trailers, just a really devastating damage. And then we also had part of that system as it headed east, heavy rain, thunderstorms. This is Meriwether Post Pavilion outside of Washington, D.C. There's a Halsey concert and you can see the rain just pouring in. Folks were delayed and caught inside the stadium for a number of hours until they could get out, but really strong stuff.
Now, climate calamities, they're becoming frequent day by day. Wildfires, droughts, famines across the world have become a major cause of worry. Recently, a wildfire in mountains in southern Spain is forcing evacuation of thousands of people from the town of Benavis. A wildfire in mountains in southern Spain has forced evacuation of some 2,000 people from the centre of the town of Benavis and injured three firefighters, authorities said. The blaze started on Wednesday afternoon on the slopes of Pujera Mountain in the Sierra Bermea above the Costa del Sol, a magnet for British tourists on the Andalusia coast, Andalusia's wildfire department said on Twitter. Hot summer weather and adverse winds are stoking the blaze, it said in a post late on Wednesday. In the news these days, we read about and see devastating events, each more unusual, destructive and unprecedented than the last. They are happening more frequently and more intensely, just as the Bible said would happen just before the return of Jesus Christ. These devastating events are not accidents, nor are they merely the natural cycle of things. The world is enduring events that are designed to bring about the end of days and cause us to repent. No, things will never get back to normal. They will only get worse. As the birth pains continue to become more frequent and more intense, one has to wonder, how close are we to the rapture and the seven-year tribulation? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. When a person comes to know Jesus as their Savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ. Salvation is a sovereign act of God, whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit, as we read in John 3.3 and Titus 3.5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 27 and James 2:26. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what about repentance? Repentance is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God draws that person to himself, as we read in John 6:44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. Repentance is something God gives. It is only possible because of his grace. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of God drawing us, opening our eyes, and changing our hearts. God's long-suffering leads us to repentance, and so does his kindness, as we read in 2 Peter 3.9 and Romans 2.4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but his long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Ephesians 2, 8, 9 declares, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ 
always results in good works. The person who claims to be a Christian but lives in willful disobedience to Christ has a false or dead faith and is not saved. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. That is why John the Baptist called people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Matthew 3.8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. A person who has truly repented of his sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of a changed life as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A person who has not repented of their sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of the works of the flesh, as we read in Galatians 5.19-21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A person who has crucified the flesh and belongs to Christ will give evidence of the Spirit, as we read in Galatians 5.22-24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Believers are born again, regenerated when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unregenerated. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as we read in John 14, 17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt and detached from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, if you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. Scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Praise God, our salvation is most definitely, eternally secure. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready!